Hey, what's up? I'm Noah, this is Analog Resurgence, and today I just wanted to answer some frequently asked questions about Super 8. So I love Super 8, as some of you might realize at this point, and I've gotten to talk a little bit about it over the past little month. So today I just wanted to do a short little roundup of some of that information and talk about some frequently asked questions that some people still have, but I just didn't get to mention in the previous videos. So let's check it out. Can I shoot Super 8 in quantities larger than 50 feet? So Super 8 was introduced in the 60s in 50 foot quantities in the little plastic cartridges, so you are kind of stuck with shooting it in 50 foot quantities if you're shooting it today. But that limitation on shooting Super 8 is kind of what makes it really exciting and fun to play around with. What happens when I send my film to the lab? So I've gotten the opportunity to work in a couple of different film labs, but I'm saving some of that information for later videos where I'd like to get a little bit more in depth into it because it is pretty cool. But if you're curious about what happens once you finish shooting that cartridge in your camera, you send it away to the lab and they return it usually on something like this. And this is a plastic reel of 50 feet of processed Super 8 film. And now around the outside, and at the very end of the roll is a little bit of white film that's called leader film. Leader film is just protective so that when you're handling it, the film doesn't get damaged. Alternatively, in comparison to a 50 foot plastic reel, you might get back one of these bigger reels. So if you're shooting multiple rolls of Super 8 and you send them all away to the lab at once, you might get one of these bigger ones back. That all depends on what your lab has available. Can I double expose Super 8? So for all you experimental filmmakers out there, unfortunately, no, you can't really double expose Super 8. Because the film is in a plastic cartridge system, you can't easily rewind an entire roll and shoot it back through the camera again. There's just a chance you could break the cartridge or damage the film, and then you could lose what you've already shot. If you really want to play around with double exposure, then 16mm is kind of the format to do so. What can I do with my Super 8 negative? So again, for Super 8 film, there's negative film and there's reversal film. The Vision 3 Kodak film is color negative film. Now when you shoot this stuff and you get it back from the lab, it's a negative image. In this day and age, shooting negative film usually means that it will be digitally transferred. So it's what the lab or transfer house would take and scan and then give you a digital file back. But there is one lab in the entire world that I know of that will take your Super 8 negative and turn it into an actual print that you could project. It's a film lab called Andec in Germany and I've never used their services but they are to my knowledge the only lab in the entire world that is capable of doing Super 8 prints from Super 8 negatives. So if you're really shooting a negative that you actually want to see projected then send your film to Andec. And if any of you guys do, please let me know because I'm really curious about what their services are like. So there you have it. Those are just a few questions that I still see some people have or just things that people can still get confused about when shooting Super 8 or getting into the format. Thank you guys so much for watching and subscribe if you haven't done so already because I'm going to continue to post all this analog content every week about different formats and different cameras and little videos like this with just little bits of information here and there to help you guys out. So thanks so much and I'll see you guys soon.